I was prescribed what my gynecologist called rat poison. Uh, it's called boric acid and that experience kind of made me really think about how little I knew about my body, how little medicine knew about the female body, that we were still using literal rat poison to solve very common vaginal infections. And it sent me on this journey to find out why we have these enormous knowledge gaps about half the people on earth. My name is Rachel E. Gross. I'm a science journalist and the author of Vagina Obscura. I'm rethinking how we see the female body and how science understands and treats people with all bodies. So as I started to write this book, I realized that we don't even have good words to talk about this part of the body. Uh, so kind of in the public consciousness, People are always using these vague euphemistic terms like down there, between the legs, private parts, lady parts. And then in science, you have words like the reproductive system, the reproductive organs. It includes the vulva, the clitoris, the vagina, the ovaries, and the uterus, and all the tubes and plumbing therein. But I personally think that reproductive organs is way too narrow because all of these organs are doing so much more than making a baby or waiting around to potentially make a baby. They're involved in regeneration, immunity, pleasure, sexuality. Like if you don't have the words to talk about your own body, how can you be empowered as you go into the world as you want to talk about your own body to others or you want to understand the medical information you're getting? The study of female anatomy is based on a lot of wrong assumptions and a lot of binaries. Um, you have to remember that the people doing this work were mostly white men and they associated the female body with a lot of things we don't like to, uh, like shame, for instance. So Hippocrates actually named our genitals the shame parts. These old anatomists were also really invested in the differences between men and women. And they saw the female body as sort of this inferior, inside out version of the male. A lot of old myths and assumptions about what women are for and what their bodies can do um, has really held back how we treat very common diseases. So like endometriosis, for example, which affects one in 10 women and people with this anatomy and can affect fertility and just cause lifelong chronic pain. Uh, and for decades, it was treated as a problem that came about because women were pursuing careers and not having babies. So doctors as late as the 90s were recommending that women get pregnant to solve their endometriosis or prescribing really strong hormonal drugs to suppress their reproductive system that caused a lot of side effects. And because they weren't looking at this as just another biological condition rather than some mythical women's disease, they weren't finding other options to treat it that were better and less harmful for the people suffering. The ovaries, which are both where eggs are and where eggs get kind of pumped out every month uh, in the cycle of ovulation, but they're also like these batteries that are producing hormones that support every body system from your brain to your blood to your heart um, throughout your entire life. So really this system of organs is involved in your entire body and your body-wide health. One of the things that I always remember from high school biology class is learning that uh, as a woman, you are born with all the eggs you'll ever have. And starting around puberty, they kind of trickle away um, over a series of menstruation period cycles um, until you end up with none, and that's menopause. And something I learned in my book research is that's probably not true, and it's definitely not the whole story. Uh, so for about 20 years, scientists have been looking in the ovaries and finding stem cells, these regenerative pluripotent cells that can grow and develop into specialized cells, and some of them can turn into new eggs, it turns out. So. Finally, at this point, textbooks are changing to reflect the fact that 
ovaries are probably making new eggs throughout our lifetime. They definitely have the ability. We just need to study it within the body instead of just in the lab. So the uterus, which is like the mythological center of the female body, is generally considered either the organ of pregnancy or as one Hippocratic text put it, the origin of all diseases. So it's either pregnancy or disease. Uh, and recently we've had a lot of, in this case, women researchers who have been looking at the uterus in a new way and seeing it as this hotbed of regeneration and almost organ creation. Um, so every single month for most people with a uterus, you're producing an entirely new lining. So new cells are forming, there's stem cells doing their thing, and that is your period. Um, and instead of looking at this as something that's prone to disease or that it's just practice for pregnancy, uh, researchers are now looking at, at it as one of the most regenerative organs in the body and a form of scarless wound healing uh, that could teach us more about healing in general, about immunity and about processes that involve stem cells, bone marrow, immune cells. So they're looking at the uterus as this scientific opportunity rather than just a liability and something that we can learn from to understand all bodies better. I think what we're seeing is a new era where you're getting a lot of perspectives in science and medicine that we didn't have before. So women, people of color, LGBTQ people, and by virtue of their own experiences, they are seeing gaps that previous white male scientists have not. But I think at a structural level, we need to invest research dollars in this before we can see the fruits of that and trust that People with these bodies matter. They matter whether or not they're getting pregnant. I think this is a beginning, and I think that the lens we look at it through really affects the science. So yeah, I think that starting with good metaphors and rich language is the beginning of a new movement. I don't know if that will fit. <laughs> no, that's cool. I think it always yeah. Yeah.